Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. We have two teams in today's game with plenty of confidence as they're riding big-time winning streaks. It's the Browns going up against the Jets. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. able to plow forward up to about the 29 just shy of the 30 it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down see if they stay on the ground for second down they'll run it now out of the gun and he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Now Castle out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. This for three to the 29. In a word, I would say productive, finding the end zone three different times. Is it possible that you're really underselling it? Three touchdowns just gonna call him productive? Right. Yeah. What, what do you want? This guy had a nose for the end he zone. He was good. Had a snoop full, didn't he? How about that? Big time game. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here we go. Throwing is Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open. And complete and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory gonna give this time to the tailback and he's going to get this one down to the 45. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Yeah. 
second down following the run. Let's go! Watch that round! Let's go! Jackson now. Got his man over the middle. This is quick. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the play. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football, that's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Let's go! To throw is Jackson. To throw on second down. And this one's incomplete. But well, they're slinging it. And then there's one... put a timer on huh I mean that one came in hot that came in hot but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete to throw on third down Jackson and this is caught at the eight and he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end, or wide receiver that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that stat, and it drives them crazy because they understand that without a quarterback, they don't make the plays that they make. They also don't feel like they get enough credit for bailing out some of the throws the quarterbacks make. Absolutely. Takes two to tango. Looking to throw on second down. Jackson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? So you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. And this will go for five up to the 33. It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. Here's Castle. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that and no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. now out of the gun and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field Holding offense. 
So their move is to decline that so they don't get another second down. It'll be third. So that has to tell us that they're pretty confident in their third down defense, right? Absolutely. Whether it's a sub package or nickel package, whatever they want to run out there, it's like they can defend here on third down. Throw left side complete. It's Blair. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Call it a pickup of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Now a handoff looking right. Oh, it shifts past him. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. This running game so important for them, and they know that. It helped lead them to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it. It's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They want to be that team that runs the ball really well each and every week. And right now, we're seeing a pretty good pattern of that happening. Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Well, usually you don't think of the quarterback coming in for a no-game play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. And how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No game for the offense. Big play for the defense. Looking to throw. Jackson. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaunt. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Jets will take over first and ten. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. Hurry up, here we go. Three, 19. Ah! Back to throw here. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Now back to throw. He's got it. This is where. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 14 yards is the pickup there at a jet first down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. He'll look to throw. And some room to work. And he slides to avoid the hit. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll make it third and one. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. He needed a yard. That's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Well, I go with the fresh legs. Able to push forward, pick up that first. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audible there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Well, they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. I was not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. Ball start. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. The Jets on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Let's go. 319. 319. They're going to look to throw. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. And I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. Offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Second down, they'll try and run the counter. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. He'll drop to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Meanwhile, checking in on what's going on in Baltimore. And the Bengals out to the early advantage. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it will stay tight throughout. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Oh, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Jackson now looking to throw on second down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams, and a return across midfield and a 46-yard line. That's an experienced DB picking off a rookie, and you know sometimes those experienced DBs, they love going against the young pops, don't they? And I go back to the offseason, had a quick conversation with him about, hey, when you play younger quarterbacks, what's it like for you? And he says, it's like being a boxer. I give him a lot of different angles, a lot of different looks, and a lot of times I just bait the young guy. And there he baited him right into the interception. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to MetLife Stadium after this short timeout. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And an alley to run. 
Newton. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. They'll set up to throw. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch. Gets his feet down. Sets up a fourth down in short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You got to know where the marker is, right? Got to figure it out. I know every receiver's taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. They want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And he whips that one incomplete there. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because that incompletion's on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Back to throw. Jackson. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A nice little juke. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And now out come the Jets. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say... No, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they are going to take possession of the football inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys who have to touch the ball and carry it, they're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force him into going for three and not giving up six. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if. While the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding him to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. The conventional football. Football 101 tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. 
But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Now on third and long, they look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. That's pulled in at the 32. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. The Browns on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Looking to throw. Jackson. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Now a signal and a timeout call. As it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go. Throwing on first down. It's Jackson. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Ingram. Another nice gain. 16 yards there and a first down again. A big completion there, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Very heady football. That allows them the opportunity to go ahead and line up and kick one right before the half ends. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. An NFL update there in the second quarter in Baltimore. And the Bengals out to the early advantage. And we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into... Well, who needs a halftime? Am I right? Let's resume play. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Back to throw. Jackson. He's got it to Ingram. Complete. And he's able to get out to the 32. Brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now Jackson to throw on third down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. This will be fielded at the 17. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. They run the counter now on first down. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. 
Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Uh, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. <laughs> A great return there of 22 yards. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Here we go. Jackson on third down. And he fires one, but incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Looking to throw. Jackson. And that is going to be incomplete. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield right at the 48. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They'll look to throw here. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the, at the 15 yard line. Not too bad. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps, is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over, and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. They go play action here on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off just shy of midfield. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. And maybe he telegraphed it a little bit right there. You've got a cornerback knowing that he's going against a rookie quarterback. 
He stepped in and picked it. You think he had a great week of preparation, looking forward to this opportunity? And the second part of that is, when you're a young quarterback, you are going to stare down targets, but oftentimes your playbook hasn't expanded to give you full field reads as well. Makes it a little bit tougher for him. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. They'll drop the throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. That one's good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You got a chance to rumble. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And he's got it. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A good pickup there of 20 yards. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball. This First and goal here from the two. Back to throw. Jackson. And he fires one incomplete. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Yeah, he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. And he puts it through. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Back 
to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. And he will find his man on the outside. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Let's go! 319! They run a draw here on second down. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. they got to get it to the 21 here on third down. All right, here we go. 3, 19. They'll set up a throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They'll look to throw. Looking for the end zone. And this is going to be incomplete. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And this Browns defense stands tall. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they... Now, a loose football. The ball comes out. Wow. That ball is not free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here's Jackson to throw on second down. And incomplete on the deep ball. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. But guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot it. 
Let's face it, you can run the round tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. start the drive throwing the slant pattern here complete and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory they call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively they bottled him up that's why they're right on their way to victory put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game brackets double zone man you name it make sure he gets a lot of angles See if they stay on the ground for second down. Hang on now. Three, Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. Definitely desperation time. This just looks like, hey, throw it down there. Hope that your guy can make a play. You want him to make a play, but if not, maybe you get a pass interference call. And you know in the NFL, that's a spot foul. You get all that yardage. That would be a big play. And this is incomplete. offense trotting back onto the field and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to come from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field yeah just something to build off of that's what they're looking for here Looks like he'll throw here. And this is incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Looking to throw. Jackson. He's got quick. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Let's go! To throw is Jackson on first down. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And down inside the 15 he goes. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. And to give this time to the tailback. And he loses the football a second time. But I think a Brown was able to recover, and they'll indeed hold on to the ball here. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was, because that's all defense is talking about. Getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. The Browns on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and four. Jackson now. Operating from the gun. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. 
Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Back to throw. Jackson. And the return goes up to his own 17-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Now Castle. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain.